to the minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. One day, when the glory comes, it will be ours, it will be ours. Oh, one day, when the war is won, we will be sure. the heavens no man no weapon formed against yes Thank you so much for letting me join you. I don't have a clue what you do at 11 o'clock, but whatever it is you do do, I'm happy that you're doing that do and that you have decided to do the do with me. Today marks 70 years and one day of the reign and the rule of our sovereign lady, the Queen, Elizabeth Regina, Queen of England and of the Commonwealth. Uh, and as you heard, as you heard in the opening, God save the Queen, 70 years. She wrote a wonderful little letter yesterday, or rather on Saturday, uh, to, to kind of commemorate the occasion that is the 70th year of her ascension to, to the throne after the death of her father, uh, King George, who became king uh, due to an abdication by her uncle, King Edward, and um, consequently landing her um, through the line of succession as the ruling and reigning monarch and the longest reigning monarch, uh, I think, in, in the world, definitely, presently. And so the letter went like this. It said, tomorrow, the 6th of February, marks the 70th anniversary of my accession in 1952. It is a day that even 70 years, I still remember as much for the death of my father, King George, as for the start of my reign. As we mark this anniversary, it gives me pleasure to renew to you the pledge I gave in 1947, 
that my life will always be devoted to your service. As I look ahead with a sense of hope and optimism to the year of my Platinum Jubilee, I am reminded of how much we can be thankful for. These last seven decades have seen extraordinary progress socially, technologically, and culturally that have benefited us, benefited us all. And I am confident that the future will offer similar opportunities to us and especially to the younger generation in the United Kingdom and throughout the Commonwealth. I am fortunate to have had the steadfast and loving support of my family. I was blessed that in Prince Philip, I had a partner willing to carry out the role of consort and unselfish, unselfishly make the sacrifices that go with it. It is a role I saw my own mother perform during my father's reign. This anniversary also affords me a time to reflect on the goodwill shown to me by people of all nationalities, faiths, and ages in this country and around the world over these years. I would like to express my thanks to you, to you all for your support. I remain eternally grateful for and humbled by the loyalty and affection that you continue to give me. And when in the fullness of time, my son Charles becomes king, I know you will give him and his wife Camilla the same support that you have given me. And it is my sincere wish that when the time comes, Camilla will be known as Queen Consort as she continues her own loyal service. And so as I look forward to continuing to serve you with all my heart, I hope this jubilee will bring together families and friends, neighbors and communities after some difficult times for so many of us in order to enjoy the celebrations and to reflect on the positive developments in our day-to-day -day lives that have so happily coincided with my reign. Signed, Elizabeth R. Isn't it just wonderful how Her Majesty, you know, is making sure that you all know exactly what to do when London Bridge falls, right? Because that's the code for when she dies. London Bridge has fallen. So whenever London Bridge falls, right, she will make sure she know y'all know exactly what's happening, right? So we're not making Camilla no queen. She's going to get to be queen consort, right? Which is above consort because we could just make a consort to the monarch, and then that would also not be queen. But you know, queen consort is like queen light. It's like it's like low fat queen, right? And so Camilla will have that opportunity to be. Um, I think it will still be her royal highness, the queen consort to king. Uh, Charles, if if he keeps his name right, because you know monarchs change their name when they when they ascend. Except uh, Her Majesty didn't change her name, right? She was named uh, Elizabeth. She kept the name Elizabeth, uh, unlike her father who changed his name to George. I can't remember what his name was before that. So that's a little bit of history. Uh, I just wanted to get that out of the way. So happy 70th anniversary, Your Majesty. Uh, we here in the Commonwealth are still happy to be uh, forever loyal. To your reign, right? Uh, I remember there was an interview by Prince Philip, I think it was about maybe six years ago, and they asked him after so many years of marriage, is there anything that you want to say to the people? And all he turned and said, I want to say that after 64 years, I remain committed to your Her Majesty. I said, you know, this is a smart man. He know exactly how to keep peace in the house. Anyway, so that's enough of that. Uh, I'm talking uh, labor and union uh, uh, issues today. I, I have on the hard line with me John Pinder. But right before I get to John, I think he's there, is he there? He should be joining me soon. Before I get to John, I have some questions. Paul Rule still the commissioner of police? Anyone can answer that for me? Is Paul Rule commissioner of police still commissioner of police? Because he looks to me, he looks to me like an ambassador of some sort now. I've seen him now on what is it, three separate occasions with three very high ranking officials flying to and fro throughout the world. And if social media has any value, there was some circulation by a page purporting to be him that suggested that he, you know, paid his own way uh, to Dubai. I have not I've not been able to confirm and or deny that. Um, that aside, right, for whatever it is worth. I saw pictures of him again with, with uh, the Deputy Prime Minister, I, Chester Cooper, and they was just going to go get fire trucks. And I really couldn't understand why would the Commissioner of Police be so enthralled with the purchase of fire trucks. I mean, don't get me wrong, I have been someone that has advocated in the past for there to be a Commissioner of Fires. Like, I really believe we need to stop the Commissioner of Police 
from also having responsibility for fires. That's why everything around here is burning all the way to the ground before we could catch it because he too busy trying to keep Pookie them from killing each other and he don't have time to check for no fire. So I believe, I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful in this dispensation of the Progressive Liberal Party, we see a commissioner of fires, we give him his own branch and we hire one bunch of firefighting Negroes around this place and we let them fight fire. And that is be all they just do is train and fight fire. And they learn how to, and, and buy them a tugboat too, so they can fight tugboat fire too. I want this to be a big time operation. And like when plane crash and then they could like fight fire near the shoreline and that kind of stuff because they'd be in the tugboat. And if you all try burning down downtown again, you'll have a tugboat there that could spit water and you know, that kind of stuff, right? So I'm hopeful. But I don't get it because Pookie them, Pookie them been killing one another around here with impunity actually. And it don't seem to me like no commissioner care because the commissioner can't care that Pookie them killing one another if he up and down and all day up and down behind the deputy prime minister and in Dubai riding on ferry boat. I don't know. I don't know. Someone would need to explain it to me. When does he get the time to put together the crime strategy to see the crime strategy deployed, to test and adjust the strategy so as to ensure that Pookie them, who does adjust their strategy daily, aren't outpacing the resources of the Royal Bahamas Police Force. I am hard pressed to believe that he could do that and simultaneously fritter all about. You following me? So if anybody know his cell phone number, text him, send him a WhatsApp, I don't know, send it to him, send it to him on Twitter. He definitely would respond on Twitter, right? Send it to him on Twitter and ask him, hey, what's going on, Pablo? Because I imagine his friends probably call him Pablo. You still in, you still the chief? Because I don't know no more. I don't know who the chief of police is. I'm very nervous. I don't want to live in a society where I ain't sure who the chief of police is because that's why I don't want to go to Mexico. I don't know who the chief of police is there either. I ain't really sure if it's the guy in uniform or not. I want to live in a country where it is a clear line to who the chief of police is and there is no ambiguity and we don't have to worry about him uh, operating in some sort of fear about his position or otherwise. I also don't think the commissioner of police could just be on no bunch of vacation flying all around the world like y'all ain't making record breaking where the numbers. I, I this is this and this is unconscionable to me. All right, so I want to talk about that a little bit. I don't know where John Finn is. He, sh he should be joining me shortly on the hard line, uh, and we're going to talk later. But until he gets here, I also want to talk about the fact that uh, I don't know what's going on, and I hope John can help me with this when he gets on the line. But the wind told me, right, that a lot of the linesmen that are working at the telecommunication company here happen to have accents that either are quite interesting or not Bahamian, right? And so, you know, I like to go check things for myself, right? There's one bunch of fellas in the East Street South uh, portion of this island who are wearing some awkward coveralls that I can't quite figure out where those coveralls come from. I've been, I've been to the uniform center, ain't none of them in there, which means you all import these, right? These, these, ain't, these ain't regular jumpsuits. And uh, I, noticed, I, I noticed for myself that the accents are different. I, I don't know them to be Bahamian accents. And so now I have questions. Have we outsourced simple linesman duties? Have we allowed the telecommunication companies to do that? And on whose authority are they acting? And why do people like me who actually read the news every day, why am I so unaware of when did it become reasonable for... I mean, it's, it's not like... I get it. In a hurricane, if half of the island had blown away or, you know, whatever, things like that had happened, and they needed to call in backup, sure, it's an, inter it's an international company, I get it, they have international staff, that international staff could come and offer some, and offer some, uh, some assistance. Oh, no, 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 these fellas doing regular wire hooking up, yeah, regular hooking up of wire, this is, you know, big time operation, as a matter of fact, this looks pretty Mickey Mouse to me. This looks like a basic Mickey Mouse operation. The dude tying two wire onto the pole. I don't imagine that couple of Bahamian fellas couldn't do this. I, I mean, I'm not a phone expert or anything. I just, it, just, it looks pretty simple to me. I watched them work the other day. This don't look like nothing special to do, right? You just go up on the line with the ladder and you tie the wires them together and you put it in the little black sleeve. Seems pretty straightforward to me. The question for me, though, is why... Uh, the voices of the people I hear 
strangely not Bahamian. Yeah? And and I'm I'm not xenophobic at all. Like I'm all for the importation of labor. I'm all for the free movement of people. I actually am one of those people like me and Motley who subscribes to One Caribbean. Well, when none of us need a visa and I don't even need a passport, I could just go to Jamaica because I won't go, right? I, I'm, I'm big on that, yeah? But we come out of the pandemic, and if we come out of the pandemic, that means all the jobs that exist should exist primarily for the people that are local so that they could have them because if they don't have jobs, then they will need social benefits. And if you bring in people with strange accents to do the work, then where are the people with the Bahamian accents and who's taking care of them? Those are the questions I have, all right? So... Three two three six two three two. Let's go to break. Three two five four three one six three two five four two five nine. Let me figure out what's going on. My guess. When I get back, I should be here with a uh, former unionist, former director of labor, uh, former FNL candidate, John Bender, and we're going to be talking about labor around this place. I'm Levi Miller. It's Guardian Radio. Don't move. I've got more show plan. The new Guardian Radio app is here. Listen live to all our Guardian Radio shows and live video stream select programs in our studio. Get information about Guardian Radio shows and our hosts. Send messages, including text, email, and even call. All from our amazing new Guardian Radio app. Download it free today in your app store for your Apple device or Play Store for your Android device. The all new and improved Guardian Radio app. Grand Bahama, it's time to read all about it once again. As the Nassau Guardian starts a weekly Grand Bahama news supplement each and every Tuesday starting February 8th. Learn more about advertising opportunities in the Grand Bahama news supplement by calling Barefoot Marketing at 727-9515 or 827-4578. Grand Bahama, make sure you get your Nassau Guardian daily and grab your Grand Bahama News Supplement each Tuesday to keep up with all the latest Grand Bahama News. The Water and Sewage Corporation advises the public, its customers, and residents of Taylor Street, Nassau Village, that the corporation will commence improvement work on January 31st, 2022 for a period of 10 weeks. During this period, there may be interruption in water supply, road closures, and detours around the work area. Where possible, motorists are asked to avoid the area between the hours of 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. daily. The corporation apologizes for any inconvenience caused and appreciates your patience as they work to improve their level of service. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with me. It's Levin Mill. I'm on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. That means I'm unleashed. That means it's somewhere between 11 and 12 o'clock. If y'all feel like y'all going crazy because y'all can't hear my team song, don't worry about that. I just play and God save the queen today because cause today makes 70 years and one day. Eh? I mean, people don't live to be that, that uh, old anymore, but the woman has held on to her reign and has had a pretty decent reign. You know, many things happened underneath her. First televised monarch. Uh, they allow in divorce now, you know, that kind of stuff. She's still queen of the Commonwealth, head of the Anglican Church. I mean, this is just a fascinating thing. Uh, anyway, I have with me on the phone line. Let me let me, let me me take you a couple of these text messages before I get him. Uh, this here says, Levin, it's good to hear you can still play the anthem of the enslavers. They trained you well. They trained me well. They also trained you well. You driving your car around here every day on the left-hand side of the road. You think you're doing that because you feel like it. Yeah, they train all us. Don't play crazy. This one here says, great show as usual. Did you call her Elizabeth? <laughs> no, I did not call her. I called her Elizabeth Regina. All right. Um, this one here says, good morning. Leave an excellent intro music for, she's not a royal highness. She's actually Her Majesty. She would be HM, not HRH. 
uh, her, her husband was HRH, and so was her son, and I think all of the spouses that are princes and princesses would be HRH. She is HM. Uh, Queen Elizabeth is an icon to the Commonwealth, as iconic as Bob Marley and Bruce Lee. God bless her. Uh, this one here says, hi, Levin. Good show, bro. Can you ask Mr. Pinder when is furlough over and what's the severance pay for someone who was employed for 40 years? He's coming on the phone line in a minute, so we'll be able to ask. It says, Miller, the COP trying to keep his job. These people don't know when to gracefully bow out. Well, he look at you trying to get another job, either as a tourism ambassador or as deputy ambassador to Caracom, because he up and down behind these people on these plane every day. Like Pookie, them ain't killing one another, you know. Pookie, them killing each other. Left, right, and center of the commission on field trip. Ah, oh, boy. Leaving it sounds as if the Queen don't play on making it through this year. Oh, don't plan on making it through this year, but it is good to prepare after 70 years. No one is here forever. Leaving, is that Pinda? Uh, from the, I don't know what this says. This one here says, Bahamians need to realize the WTO is in effect in the Bahamas. Foreigners build your hotels, embassies, and roads. And working near hospitals, schools, and utilities, they even own wholesale and retail stores ad nauseum. Um, last one. This one here says, it's the same thing like when L.L. Smith brought officers in from the U.K. to train Marines, which never happened. These behaviors like foreign labor who don't know anything. Because, you know, I can't say that other word on radio. All right. Without further ado, I'm on the phone line now with former unionist, former director of labor, and uh, most recently former... Fox Hill candidate uh, for the Free National Movement. Uh, I think he's now retired. John Pender, he's on the phone with me. Good morning, John. How are you? Good morning, uh, Brother Miller. Good morning to all your listening audience. So, John, right out the gate, because we, we, we don't have very long. I'm trying to figure out, are, are, you, are you still keeping your thumb on what is going on around this place with regards to labor? Because there are many unusual things that I see happening, and I'm trying to see if maybe you could help us all understand. Um, the first issue that I, that I take is I see that there has been an abrupt closing down of the Hilton. Uh, the government argues that the Hilton didn't do what it was supposed to have done, as is agreed. Um, of course, there appears to be no consequence for that. But now I see the government in a celebratory kind of mood, or celebratory mood, uh, because Sandals has agreed to absorb those workers. And I feel, I feel, this is just me, that that is insufficient. There, there are some stopgap measures that should have taken place. Do you, do you share that position? And if so, why? But let me say this, the, the Employment Act speaks to if an employer is going to make more than 20, more than 10 percent redundant, 20 percent, mm -hmm. I think in this case 160, but if he's going to make more than 20 percent redundant, you have to give the minister at least two weeks notice of him doing that. Mm -hmm. And the main reason for that is so that the director of labor, who is normally the um, labor consultant to the government, mm -hmm. normally try to in consultation with the Minister of Labor, make some sort of representation on behalf of those persons that are going to be made redundant. You see how best they can wake it out and see if there's no positions available within the establishment that they're being made redundant from, mm -hmm. uh, that they may be able to fill. Okay. So, so the question I have, and the question I imagine many people are wondering is, yes, the people at the Hilton may get their jobs back, right? at the sandals, right? Because now the sandals is open. But doesn't that create several different issues? One is the issue of proper severance from the people at the Hilton. Because if I worked at, for 25 years at the Hilton, telling me that you're going to give me a new job doesn't really excite me because I should have some benefits already accrued at my prior job or my, or my, or my present job. Isn't that correct? Exactly. They, the employer has to uh, make those persons, pay those persons that they're making redundant. They have to pay them according to the, to the act. Mm -hmm. This speaks to the subordinate staff getting two weeks in lieu of notice mm -hmm. each year up to 24 weeks. Mm -hmm. And those supervisors or managers, they get one month's salary up to 48 weeks. Mm -hmm. Four weeks out of the 48 weeks, along with the redundancy notice pay. Okay. The vacation accru accrued, that's the pay for the vacation also. And so you're saying anything other than that would be against the law? Yeah, it, it, would, it would have been a difference if Sanders was buying the Hiltons. Mm hmm but it just had a change of ownership of the same employer. Right. Yeah, a different employer in the same establishment. The fact that they're moving from uh, the Hiltons to Sandals, mm -hmm. they have to pay them redundancy. So what would you say now is the, uh, is the, what do the people that are employed now at the Hilton do 
to ensure that they do not find themselves relieved of 48 weeks or 24 weeks of severance. I mean, because it, it, well, as I read the stories that I see in the newspaper, I don't hear much talk about severance, et cetera, and payouts. All I hear is the Hilton say they can't continue any further. They're going to close. But I, I see uh, people like the Minister of Labor saying, well, don't be very alarmed because we're happy to announce that Sandals is prepared to take those people. And I, 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 I'm hard pressed to understand where is all this excitement coming from because there is, there is invisible money somewhere that I don't hear any conversations being had about. What in your circles are you hearing about money? I'm not hearing about money, but I would like to reach out to those persons and let them know that one of the things I'm now doing as a retired uh, trade unionist and director of labor is labor consultant. Mm -hmm. I can consult on their behalf. They wish me to represent them before the employer. They can call me at 357 9150. I know you're going to send me a bill for that letter, wait a minute. But they can call me. I can certainly uh, um, look at their matter and ensure that they are properly compensated. Mm -hmm. And this is for people who have, who have labor issues? Certainly, certainly. Anybody with labor issues? Okay. To some extent, you know, I'm trying to also cause employers to understand the importance of a proper employment contract for workers. Mm -hmm. I see too many um, employers um, more just giving a, a variable commitment to some extent, or mm -hmm. just a letter of engagement to, to speak to the people with benefits, doesn't speak to uh, the way in which they can um, be penalized for a breach um, as relates to the, com the company's policy. So sometimes they don't even know they're making a breach that happens, and then the employer then pulls them in, HR pulls them in, says, listen, uh, this is a breach you're making. And so I want to work with employers also to fashion um, policies, guidelines, and procedure in accordance with the Employment Act and other um, policy that idea that the employer was ahead to, like the Occupational Safety and Health Act, those things, um, so that the employer will know exactly what they are uh, entitled to and what the employees are entitled to. Now, now you you talked about you're talking about 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 employee protection, right? But are we doing enough, John, to ensure that we put enough teeth in the act or in the policy to ensure that employers and investors? aren't just packing up shop and going home and leaving us to kind of hold the bag? I can say, um, as a member of the National Congress of Trade Unions and the National Park Tri-Side Council, mm -hmm. we, from way back then, were trying to make recommendations, or made recommendations, to successive governments, including the last one, to put more teeth into the Employment Act mm -hmm. so that the workers can be... Um, more safeguarded mm -hmm. as relates to um, what their benefits are and may, minor and major breaches. There's one clause that every employer uses when they want to get rid of an employee and don't want to pay them sovereign pay. They use this thing with gross and subordination. But there has to be um, some uh, um, a track record definition. of that. Right. Gross and subordination. It can't be that. I say, well, what you mean by that? He's all oh, you rude. And then you terminate me, right. so you don't have to pay me. Yeah, so, but John, John, I mean, but I mean, but so so let, let let's look at it a, a, a bit a bit deeper than that, right? What are the repercussions that can be levied against an investor who uh, who does exactly what the Hilton? I mean, the Hilton is in breach. They are, they are in breach of the law, right? This whole uh, instant shutdown of their operations is it's, it's not lawful, right? And so. But what, what, I mean, what consequences can be visited upon them? What, what, what can the government do? So according to the Act, Brother Miller, if they did not advise the government, according to the Act, they have to pay an additional 30 days salary to those individuals that are being um, terminated or, or, or made redundant. And who guarantees this? Four weeks salary. Who guarantees this? Well, the law is there to protect them. If they need to do so, they file a dispute at the Department of Labor. Mm -hmm. They need to get a resolve there. Um, they could be transferred to the industrial tribunal or just go straight to the Supreme Court, depending on the amount of persons involved. Mm. And, 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 and how many people would they need to, to start a class action suit? I mean, would they need no, to be no, a minimum? No, no, no I, I should say not the amount of persons involved, sorry. The, depending on the, the amount of money involved. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, um, the sad thing about it, we're still trying to give the industrial tribunal more teeth. Mm -hmm. So that when um, the president makes a ruling, mm -hmm. that is a ruling. Um, we were trying to, last National Tripartite Council Group, we're trying to get that part of the law transferred to the, I mean, that, um, trying to get the Justice Tribunal transferred mm -hmm. to, to the Civil Status of the Supreme Court, okay. so that when she makes a ruling, mm -hmm. uh, um, that would be um, gospel. 
Okay. But still, you, the president can make a ruling, hmm. and they can decide, well, you know what, we're not going to adhere to this ruling, and still force the worker, knowing for where they can't afford uh, these high-profile lawyers like the employer may have, and to go to the Supreme Court. Hmm. But luckily thing for them, most of the time, if it goes to the Supreme Court, the employee representative being the her attorney, his or her attorney, can also um, ask for for um, the the fees, the court fees. Okay. So now let, 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 let's push the envelope a little further, John. Now, so the whole celebration of employees who were working at the Hilton for whatever period of time that they did work, now coming in, and I, and I, I do hear some talk about severance. Again, like I tell people all the time, that is, when you talk about a man abruptly losing his job, sometimes severance isn't enough to cover the, you know, the engagements that he would have made prior to him knowing he would have lost his job, right? Um, and so you say, oh, yeah, they're going to get their severance. But yeah, no, I just took out a 10-year mortgage that I didn't intend to have to be stressed out about because I intended to have a job for 10 years, right? And now you created a new situation for me. So there's that situation. The other situation that I want to go to, though, is that the people at Sandals have been, I don't even know what you call them anymore. Are they furloughed? Were, are they now unemployed? Are they disengaged? Because many of them were actually holding on, waiting on Sandals to go through the renovation period. And now Sandals has gone through its renovation period. And now there's talk about bringing in new staff, technically. Um, where, do that, where does that leave the, the, the present employee of a place like Sandals? Okay, so let me just, I want to remind you that the government is also an employer. Okay. And successive governments is guilty of what you just mentioned. They don't care about your mortgage, your school, your children's school thing, and how you going to live or rent to pay. Mm -hmm. They terminate you based on how they're doing it right now. People have to go sue the government for a breach of contract and all the rest of that. Mm -hmm. And I want to also say this. Let me put this on the record, too. Mm -hmm. I've been saying this from the time the, I think it was the England administration, who first started to talk about constitution reform and amendments to the Constitution. Mm -hmm. The first thing I said to them, and I will continue to say that, and I hope at some point, some leader of this country will have the testicle fortitude mm -hmm. to actually make this law or make this a policy. They should bring their top management and the people they want when they're coming in. Mm -hmm. You should have that five-year contract or, or or as long as the government is in, because sometimes they call it a snap election, and you go with your government. Mm -hmm. It is wrong, wrong, wrong for the government to appoint persons or to contract persons knowing full well that the next government can terminate them or, or can terminate the contract. And, and then who, who, who got paid for it? The but why do people leave themselves the to be bastardized in that fashion? Pardon me? Why do people volunteer themselves to be bastardized in that fashion? Well, you know something? If I need a job and I leave, let's say I'm in the private sector, mm -hmm. I am making $80,000 a year. Mm -hmm. The government offered me a job because of my expertise and my experience at $100,000, but all these cars, better fit, and all the housing allowance, the rest that you hear being talked about, right? Mm -hmm. I give up my job, and um, I might have had another 10 years left uh, on, on, on a previous job. Mm -hmm. So I am trying my best to financially look at how feasible this new contract is to me. Mm -hmm. So the government, they give it to you for free three years, you're going to get a 50% gratuity. And when you hear them talk about housing allowance and certain responsibility allowance, that is not attached to, to salary. salary. Yeah, that's not salary. Student. That's not base, yeah. Gratuity. Mm -hmm. But they give you this stuff on the side so they don't have to calculate that in the gratuity. Right. See? So you're trying your best now to ensure that you're safe at least for four or five years. That's how I try to protect myself too, but unfortunately I wasn't able to do so, right? Mm -hmm. You get yourself caught up in a mortgage, you take a mortgage to pay, the government will offer you a job, you're trying to make sure you're able to do that. Now here's what you do. You go ahead... And so when you realize the handwriting on the wall, there will be a change of government, you go talk to the leader of the man and say, Mr. Leader, may looking good? Or oh, I need to make sure I'm more secured than I am now. Can you please um, you know, renegotiate this contract and give me another three, four years? Mm -hmm. Or whatever the case may be. Knowing full well that they fixed it in such a way that you can't terminate the contract. Only an employee, I mean, an employer can terminate the contract, but not an employer. Mm -hmm. All right? Unless there's some legal battle. And so now I am secured on that job. And then the government comes and they don't want me. So what do they do? They send me on leave for four years, five years, tell the government change again. I am getting full salary. I might only lose the responsibility allowance because I am responsible for nothing. Right. I'll spend it because it's a part of the contract to make me everything. Hmm. I get free car, free phone, full salary. I ain't losing no vacation. I ain't losing nothing. And I you're saying that's something that we have to change. That pays expense. Mm -hmm. And when I was president, I fought this so hard because I remember they were 
heads of department who were sending people home on administrative leave for years. And I told them this cannot be right. And I tried to put a clause in the industrial agreement and said, you can't send everybody home for longer than X amount of time. Mm-hmm. And at that point, uh, we were talking about no longer than 90 days. They mm-hmm. said, you know, three, four, five years, man. Yeah. But successive governments refused to make that a policy in the public so that you can't send people on administrative leave for more than 90 days. Well, I see there's being massive uh, reviews of the public service now. I see the Honorable uh, Pia Cloverroll is down there, uh, according to her, doing some heavy lifting uh, in the in the readjustment of the way the policy of the public service will work. There's a 10 plan. I really plan. want to congratulate her. I believe she even saw my blueprint. Mm-hmm. So much of what she's saying, she and I have so much on the same accord. I really want to congratulate her for um, how she's moving so far with mm-hmm. the public service and trying to get things resolved. But let me, I will make a recommendation to her and hopefully she get this. Mm-hmm. So still the best way to get anything done in the public service as relates to promotion and changing the policies is have a task force. Okay. I, th- I think there was an establishment of a task force. I'm, I, I, I'm almost certain I saw that on the news. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. if she can, if you have a task force, she would get it done more quickly and with less uh, um, person challenging it. Mm-hmm. Because too often, see, let me tell you the problem with the public service. behavior has got bad ways, man. <laughs> if I've been in a position for 10 years, mm-hmm. I can make sure you ain't get a position quicker than that. Mm-hmm. Guys, what experience you coming? What qualification you coming? I can try my best to hold you down. Mm. And another problem they have in the public is they lease the salaries. I don't know why the compensation study, the the Christian administration spent more than half a million dollars on the compensation study for the public service. Right? Okay. But my problem with the public service, and I still have this problem, and I don't care who's the government. This is a problem that has to be fixed. Persons ought to be paid from the public based on level of responsibilities. Mm-hmm. All right. I always had this, this challenge. How in the hell? I have friends who may get angry because they have family business. How in the hell you could justify paying a deputy financial controller in a government corporation mm-hmm. more money than the treasurer of the government of the Bahamas? How you could do that? How you could pay auditors from these um, um, organizations more money than the, the, the auditor of the government of the Bahamas? Who has the last responsibility? This woman, the, 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 the treasurer of the government of the Bahamas, is responsible for the government revenue and expenditure and all the properties. Mm-hmm. This is better than the treasurer. But you, you could pay some person out of some amount, come and cooperate more money in the treasurer. This is ludicrous the way we run this country. And I can tell you, this country is really sufficient ready to run, you know. But to be in this space, too much money. Mm. So what about, so, but, but John, I mean, I hear you talking about duty allowances and all those things and responsibility allowance. And maybe that is where, maybe that is where the loophole comes in for a lot of the wastage that you talk about, right? A lot of these people wouldn't do these jobs. And they like to say, oh, well, I'm only making $70,000 a year. Yeah, that's on your base salary. But when I add up your cell phone allowance, your, your, your gas allowance, your allowance for showing up on Monday, and all these other allowances, you know, comfortably you you, you land around $100,000, $120,000. And when I send you home, you anticipate that you will get every single one of these allowances. So yeah, I mean, you'll get them, especially the career civil service. There was a, let me tell you what happened. And I, I could partly tell you because I negotiated some of these things. Okay, now again, I use that example. There were clerks. In, in creating that government agency to making more than qualified accountants in the public service. Mm-hmm. I said, this can't be right. This mm-hmm. can't be right. Mm-hmm. What they did to try to uh, put a bridge, I mean, a gap, the bridge to gap in the, in the salary is to offer the issues one with the allowance for persons who are in certain positions. Mm-hmm. Of course, when you compare a supervisor in, in one of the government corporations, a supervisor now, not at the bottom, you know, Mm-hmm. A supervisor in the government, I was so shocked when I saw one of my um, homegirls' salary, who's just a supervisor. Mm-hmm. I was director of labor, she making me way more money than me. And I have three times, ten times the responsibility mm-hmm. that they would have. But mm-hmm. because they work for Warren Sewage, um, BTC or BPL, they were saying that, you know, they get a big salary. I remember having this argument with, with, the, with the prime minister, um, I think it was the Christian administration that I doing an industrial agreement as relation, not him, his administration, the person negotiating mm-hmm. against the, the Union for salaries. Mm-hmm. They were talking about if you make profit. But if you got a monopoly on water, you got a monopoly on food, you got a monopoly on electricity, how in the hell you could not make a profit? <laughs> uh, if you just told him, then John Penn is my guest. He's a retired, retired unionist, now turned union consultant, I'm advised. Uh, we're talking about, you know, labor around here. John, I, I still want to know the short answer, though. What exactly should the people that were furloughed from Sandals? Because there's so many issues that arise. Like, I've been on furlough for two years. Do I still get vacation pay? Am I still entitled to the vacation time? Um, you know, even over, at, at, even over at Atlantis, many of the people that came back off furlough were sent on vacation, some of them 10 days, some 14 days, and they were told, listen, you have to take this vacation, you have to take it now. Where does, where does a transition like the one from the Hilton to the Sandals leave the people that were already on Sandals payroll? 
so 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 Sanders payroll as it relates to the policy on furlough. Mm-hmm. Now this is my interpretation of it. This is what I was using, and this is what I was made to understand um, while I was director of labor. That the once the uh, curfew on the I mean the emergency order, the emergency order expired mm-hmm. on I think it was November. I think I think it was November twelfth or fifteenth somewhere. Mm-hmm. There, the employer had. 30 days after the expiration mm-hmm. of the emergency order mm-hmm. to make a decision on the employees. Either you make them redundant or you bring them back to work. Mm-hmm. And the minor, they were not losing any vacation benefits. Mm-hmm. Um, so the employer may have called you. What are employers for doing? I think Sanders was one of the questions too. They try to pay you some of your vacation to help you through the furlough period. Okay. Okay, so some, I know Atlanta did that too. So some of the major employers were not so bad. They actually helped persons by giving them the vacation money, that's have them, you know, with their financial commitments. Mm-hmm. Now, I, 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 before you got on the line, John, I alluded to something that I see happening right around my neighborhood, actually. Um, it looks to me as though the telecommunication companies around here are now bringing in their labor. Um, just from my general assessment, because the wind had told me, you, you know, you know, I run, I run around in the community a whole lot, so I hear a whole lot of things from a whole lot of places. And so the wind told me, that uh, a couple of the guys that were doing the phone services around here weren't weren't behaving, right? Of course, I was completely flabbergasted, couldn't believe that, and so I decided that I would go on a reconnaissance mission, right? And uh, much to my surprise and quite possibly dismay, from what I have been able to observe, the fellas hooking up the, the wires on the pole, they ain't got no behaving accents. Is, is there something happening around here that, that people are unaware of? Because I don't remember there being an announcement. I, I, I can only say this to you. And again, the Bahamas must become more proactive. I, 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 I was trying my best as director of labor, and I got, I, I know I got one um, um, symposium off the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, it was in honor, but it was under the passages of the then Minister of Labor and the Prime Minister mm-hmm. in Grand Bahama. The problem we are faced with, the Bahamas is not proactive enough as it relates to employment in this country. So Grand Mahama always asks for a lot of work permits in certain areas because they really lack the expertise. Mm-hmm. And the government know full well that BTC or, or was, was about to improve. I think they're trying to get a 5G thing in place. Mm-hmm. And so they need some expertise. Rather than grabbing a few Bahamian technicians who they don't let go, or who still they're trying to get rid of, and send them to get the training mm-hmm. so that they are able and capable of doing it. I'm not sure this is the case. I'm not giving you a hypothetical situation. Mm-hmm. Rather than doing that, to ensure these technicians are properly trained that they can do this themselves, they will wait for the last minute. And then the employer says, we got to get this thing in right now. We don't have the expertise. We need these people to do the work. That is what is happening in the Bahamas straight across uh, the board. But, John, I'll tell you why I have difficulty with this. Even with an investor's mind, and I hope the government will take that. I would pray, but you and I would pray to get around the cabinet table. I, even <laughs> with an investor's mind, you've got to, Brother Miller, uh-huh. put a, 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 a expiration date on their benefits. Mm-hmm. They have all these all these benefits, 20 years exemption, 30 years exemption in some cases, but some of these exemptions have no limitation. Yeah, so today, today, Atlanta still, after all those years of being existed, yeah. have the right to be 125 places on work for men. Yeah. But here's, here's, so here's the thing. Here's so the they thing. could do likewise, uh, and, and those are the um, things I'm going to do as of a, a government. The government does not put no expiration date on the same thing. You should be exempted from saying name for just a period of time. Here, here, here's why I find some difficulty with your argument, John. Okay, it, it has not been on one occasion, maybe even more than two occasions, that the telecommunications companies around here have sent home people, I mean, to the tones of millions of dollars, people with great skill, many of whom have gone into their own their own uh, uh, electronic or, 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 or communications businesses. I, I, I'm not sure if I'm prepared to believe that the, that the talent and skill set doesn't exist here. I mean, that just doesn't make sense to me. We sent home a, a dray load of people, and that is whether you're looking at the, at the electrical company or the telecommunications company. I cannot then easily accept an argument that the skill set isn't here or that the skill set isn't here to train uh, people that are trainable. That doesn't make sense to me. We, we've, had, we've, had, we've had 10 years, I think it is now, since the since the the incoming of the private telecommunications company, yeah. by now, the people that have gone home because you remember they they sent home some people the first time, right? They yeah. sent home some more people the second time. And if you remember the conversation and cry the second yeah. time was that many of them were technicians. Well, now I mean now you so you're telling me ten years. I mean look at where we've landed ten years later. We have one bunch of technicians home. Yes, many of them got two and three hundred thousand dollars. 
But now we got foreign labor on the on the lamp pole. That that that's the, I I feel like that is pretty regressive, isn't it? But I I, I concur with you. I I support your statement. You're quite right. I said that would be the excuse used. Mm -hmm. Bahamas they now wait on no uh, fiber up the cable that can provide a G5 uh, or 5G of a system. That was used as an argument to cause you to bring um, um, uh, um, the government to give them labor certificates or, or, or work permits. No, I agree, I, but you are the most immediate. You I'll are give you another example. When BPL was doing the, genera the generation plan, okay, mm -hmm. they asked us for new um, um, for work permits to bring in person, I mean, labor certificate. I challenge it. Then like, they, had a, they actually came to me and said to me, listen, man, for us to get the right guarantee on these generations, these generators, we have to ensure that the person who are uh, connecting these, genera these generators um, know exactly what they're doing. So they will kind of twist your arm and say, it's best that we do this. Then you don't want it to be said that the director of labor or the immigration department is rejecting these people, wait for them so they can't bring their expertise in to hook these generations up. And that's the reason why um, we don't have a new generation plan, because the generators need to be hooked up by experts from the company who manufacture them. They will use all these arguments, but all for cheap labor, the bottom line for cheap labor. Mm. That's what it's for, for cheap labor. Well, like I told you, I heard it in the wind. The wind had told me about the, about, the, about the importation of this labor. I don't particularly like to always listen to the wind. That only worked for my grandmother. But I, that, the reason I called or the reason I asked is because I know that you are the most immediate past director of labor, and there may have been something in the pipeline. To your knowledge, is there something that was in the pipeline that, that gave leave to this? Because this couldn't have happened overnight. No, I don't recall, but let me say this to you. Certain levels of government, they will go directly to the military. See, don't forget now. The only thing the director of labor does is issue a labor certificate. Mm -hmm. After checking the skills bank to see if we have anybody available, if we don't have anybody that suits the criteria that the employer is asking for, then we go ahead and issue the labor certificate. It's the Department of Immigration that issues the work permit. I can give you a labor certificate and tell you they're blue in the eyes. If immigration doesn't give you a work permit, you can't work in this country. Mm. Not if you're a foreigner, all right? So sometimes they will write directly to the minister and say, listen, we need these wait permits. And sometimes we'll even report these all the minister directly being difficult in approving our wait permits. And several large employers have done that to me. Mm. Because then there's them being difficult in granting them their wait permits. I mean, their labor certificates. And they need these persons in. And all I was trying to do then would have been trying to find a Bahamian that I think might have been qualified. And that's why I keep that Bahamian, even if you're on another job. Sometimes still it's good to upload your resume in the system, mm -hmm. in, the, in the skills bank system at the Department of Labor. Mm -hmm. Because you may be on a job making $60,000 a year, and the private sector may have a, a established company or organization that you don't mind working for that's offering you a better salary, but you don't know this because you're comfortable in your job and you're no longer seeking employment. Mm -hmm. John, I don't want us to run out of time. You say you're doing consultancy these days. There are a myriad of people with a myriad of questions, I imagine, from as, from as far as Grand Guy in the north all the way to March Town down south. Give them that number one more time, and then, uh, and then uh, I'm going to let you go. You can contact me on my cell phone, 357-9150. 9150. I also say that I, I work along with about three or four uh, attorneys, mm -hmm. so tell them I'm off here. All right. For the legal ground. Appreciate you, John. All right, so that was John Pender. He was on the hard line with me. He phoned all the way in from Grand Bahama, by the way. So uh, so I thank him for the time. Um, also, let me say, should I have told people that? Should I have told people that he wasn't here? Yeah. Could you please disregard that? You didn't hear me say that? Look into the light for me. Look into the light for me. Look into the light. You heard me said nothing about John's whereabouts. Now blink. Good. Fantastic. All right, so I've got some other news, man. Listen, so today... I want to send a shout out to little Jahim, Jahim Williams. His daddy, his daddy runs my life with an iron fist, right? And he, met, he said, you better shout my boy out or I will come for you. And I only drive in a little car and I don't want them to take the back tires off my little car. So Jahim Williams, congratulations on making the principal list, buddy. Keep it up. Stay on, uh, stay on that trajectory. And I imagine great success is going to be yours to have, yeah? Also, my own family is going through a little bit of a, a rough patch. I lost my Uncle Mo this morning. He's the toughest guy I know. I didn't even know Dad could get Uncle Mo. It's, it's unbelievable, right? But uh, my Uncle Mo, he's departed. Cedric Miller, he's departed this life. And uh, to my auntie Sabrina and uh, Indira, his, his daughter, I say, you know, he was a hell of a guy. That's the best I could do. He was one hell of a guy. All right? 
that's my time though. You hear my music, please play it loudly. Loudly in one voice, let us all sing God Save the Queen. I'm Levin Miller. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Your station for fresh news and smart talk. Don't move the news. It happens now. <laughs>